Hello, my name is Jimmy Vegas and welcome to this, the 8th in a series of video tutorials on how to create a Super Mario game in Unity 5. Okay, so this episode we're going to be working on a fade screen um, because we've been putting together this particular script which I'm going to open up in uh, Mono Develop or Visual Studio, uh, whichever one you're using. And um, what we're going to be doing is within this script we're going to be putting in a fading screen using an animation and a raw image. Uh, and we'll also be inputting uh, a sound which plays when we enter our pipe. So first and foremost, if you remember, at this point, we have our player able to go this far. So he goes onto the pipe, goes down into the pipe, and then instantly goes away. So what by the end of this tutorial, what I want to happen is as we're going down, the screen fades and plays a sound, and then fades back into the game, and we drop into the area below. So we'll be doing this by using, um, let's get rid of that event system, I um, don't know why that was there, probably testing before. So we're going to be doing this using um, some GUI or just UI, whichever you want to call it. Um, so if you go to game object, UI, and go to raw image. So down here you'll notice you'll have canvas and then the raw image that we've just brought in and that event system that I deleted has now reappeared. So the event system, just to give you a heads up, is related to the canvas, which stores all our um, user interface. So all the bits and bobs you see on screen, which like score, buttons or whatever, is handled inside the canvas and the event system. So in this case, the raw image, let's rename this. So F2, or right click and rename, and call it Fade Screen. And the way we'll do this is we will turn the um, color of this raw image to black. Or if you want a white screen, you keep it as white, red, blue, whichever, you change it to that. So in this case, with it being black, the red, green, and blue figures should all be zero. Now this fourth figure you have here is called alpha. Now the alpha determines just how see-through your image is. So if you have it as 255, it means your image is opaque, which means you cannot see through it. If you have it set as zero, it means your image is transparent. Anything in between will be translucent, which means you can partially see through the image. So make sure you currently have this set as zero. Over here, what we need to do is we need to set the anchor point. Now we want the image or the black to stretch the entire screen. So we want this bottom right option here. So if you click on that and then click in left, Set that as zero, top zero, then position Z as zero, right also a zero, and bottom also a zero. So all these figures should now be zero. So I'm just going to zoom out a touch, and you can see this white frame here is where our canvas is. So this is our imaginary screen. At the moment, you can't see anything because remember, we've set the alpha to zero. But if we raise the alpha, you can see that once we get to 255, the image is completely black. However, if we set it as 132, you can partially see through. That means it's translucent. So again, let's just set this back to zero. So the way we're going to do this is via some animation. Now, I have um, fade screen tutorials in other series in this. So I'm going to do this one a little bit differently. The outcome will be exactly the same, but I'm going to do this differently to show you a different method if you're perhaps following any of my other series. So with this one, we'll be using just this single fade screen item and using animation, we'll fade it over the course of half a second so as it turns completely black and then for another half a second, it turns completely uh, transparent again. So we only use one single animation in this version. So to do that, let's click on our animations folder and then click on our fade screen, click on the animation tab, click create, and let's have this as fade animation. So what we'll want to do is on the first um, frame, we need to reset this, the alpha, as zero. So if you change it to one, and then back to zero, you'll have these two little dots appear here. This ensures that the very first frame is how we want everything to start. 
which is how we set it up originally. So our samples or frames is set to 60 and I want it to last half a second each. So I just go to 30. So at the 30th frame or half a second, I want the alpha to be 255. So I want it to be completely opaque at this point. So after another half a second, so we'll go to 60, I then want the alpha to be zero again. So there we go, we should have three points now in our animation. The first and the last should be exactly the same. And the middle one just here should be 255. So it shows all of this black. And then click the record button to stop the recording. Head back to project and untick animator just here. Now the reason we untick the animator is to keep everything neat and tidy because we don't want it to animate constantly. Next thing we need to do is turn the fade screen off in the effects pane up here. So what we'll need to do is head to our script the pipe 001 entry and we'll need to put on here a new variable and that variable will be the fade screen. So let's type var fade screen and it will be of type game object semicolon. So now we have our fade screen set as a variable, we need to use it in our waiting for pipe function down here. And the way we want it to work is as we start this particular function, we need to set it active. So fade screen dot set active and then true. So then the next thing we need to do is start the animation for our player to go down the pipe which is what happens. So after two seconds, that animation stops and we transfer into the underworld. Seeing as our animation lasts half a second, we want to activate our animation so it ends at the exact point the pipe entry animation ends to. So to do that, on the yield wait for seconds to, let's change that to 1.5. And then underneath that, we need to do fade screen dot get component and in brackets and quotes animator bracket close quote dot enabled equals true and then semicolon so we've basically copied the line which is the pipe entry uh, animator enabled script except we've used it for the fade screen uh, animator so after another half a second so yield oops wait for seconds now here i'm not going to quite put half a second i'm going to go just a fraction of a second under half a second just so as it doesn't try and repeat the animation again, because we don't want it to repeat anything here. So 0 0.495 should do. So it is just under half a second. After that, we need to disable the fade screen animator. So we type fade screen dot get component. And in brackets and that again animator close bracket dot enabled equals false semicolon. So to quickly recap at this point, this waiting for pipe function, we set it active, the fade screen, then we start going down the pipe, and after one and a half seconds we start to fade the screen. After another roughly half a second, we stop the fade screen, we stop the pipe entry script, then we set the main second camera active, the main camera inactive, we transfer our player to the underworld, and then after that we need to reactivate our fade screen. So fade screen dot set active, oh nope not set active sorry, uh, get component in brackets, animator, 
dot enabled equals true. So basically what we've done when we've put false here on our face screen is we've paused the animation and then we've resumed it here. So we need to yield and wait for seconds and we'll put 0 0.495 again there. Close bracket, semicolon. And then finally, I'm going to copy this line that we've already written. Fade screen dot, that should be get, not set there. My mistake, I'm typing. Uh, copy that fade screen dot get component animator false and put it underneath your final uh, yield wait for seconds. And the last thing we need to do is fade screen dot set active and false semicolon and save so all we've done is we're going down our pipe fading changing to the underworld unpausing our animator and then turning it off so now hopefully if we go back to unity and uh, have a quick think down here on the right corner and yep everything's fine let's clear our console no errors so we need to find our pipe collider script just there. And you'll notice down here we now have fade screen, non game object. All we need to drag and drop into there is our fade screen that's in the canvas, like so. So now when we press play, we should be able to head over here, jump onto our pipe, go down and it should fade and bring us out down here. So that seems to work just perfect now. So what I'd like to do next is add some sound effects to it. So as we go down our pipe, it makes a noise. Not quite the same Mario noise because obviously that sound is copyright and we're not allowed to use it or distribute it. So instead, uh, we've created our own simple little sound. So on assets, right click, let's create a folder. Let's call it audio. And since we will have multiple audio within the game, for example, effects, uh, music, different things, uh, I'm going to create another folder inside audio and just call it FX. So I'm going to drag and drop this downpipe audio into Unity. Now you can get this off our website for free if you head over there. Uh, head to the Downloads and Assets section, head to the Mario section, and then all the way down to tutorial number 8. You'll be able to download this audio, free, of course. And where we need to put this is very specific, because we can't put it in just any old game object. It needs to be attached to the main camera, so as the audio is always prominent and can be heard clearly at all times. If, for example, you would put it in a game object somewhere over here on the left, yet the pipe is here, you would barely hear the audio. So on the main camera, right click, create empty, and let's rename it to audio, and then let's create another empty game object on there. Right click, rename, and let's call this pipe entry. And it's really just a simple case of dragging and dropping that audio sound onto pipe entry. Now over here we have a few options on the audio source. Don't worry about them too much. Just make sure you untick play on awake. The reason we untick that is the sound will automatically play if you start the game up. We want to actually make the sound play through script. So untick loop, don't worry about all these. Volume, not really important. Pitch. Well, it makes it go higher, lower, whatever, but we don't need to worry about these too much. In future tutorials, we may go into them a little bit more, but for now, not important. So one last thing to note is these two objects on the main camera, make sure the position is 0, 0, 0 in both of them. So they are dead center of the camera. So if we head back to our script, we need to create yet another variable. So var, and let's call this pipe sound, and it will be audio 
source rather than a game object. Now, our actual pipe entry object is an object. It's not theoretically an audio source, but it does have an audio source attached to it. The script is able to tell that there's an audio source attached to it, so it will use it as sound rather than a game object. To get the sound to play, first thing you'll need to do is on the function waiting for pipe, <coughs> excuse me, the very first line of code that we'll put on here is pipe entry dot play open close bracket and semicolon. Make sure your play is a capital P there, otherwise it will not work. It may throw up an error, not entirely sure, but just make sure it is capital P. Save. Head back into Unity. It's having a quick think about what we've just typed in our script. And everything seems okay. So now we need to find our pipe entry script again. So pipe collider script. And you'll see yet another variable down here that we've added. And yet, I'm sure you probably guessed it by now, drag and drop the pipe entry script straight on there. You'll see that the icon is different now. It's a little audio icon as opposed to the game object icon or prefab icon, which is that blue one just there. And with any luck now, if we press play, and we take our character over here onto the pipe, press down, we should hear the sound. Oh, and it's not quite working as I intended. So it's... It doesn't like something here. Oh, we've, um, yeah, that's right. I put pipe entry into pipe sound, isn't it? Pipe sound dot play. Let's save. So also to note there, the reason he didn't even go down the pipe without the sound is because if a script can't do one particular line, it halts the entire script and will not carry on with anything else in that script. So let's clear our console there and let's try again. Press play, run over, jump onto the pipe, press down, and there we go. So the sound now works. We now have a sound which signifies or signals our entry into the pipe. So we'll leave this tutorial there for now. Uh, next time we'll look at finishing off down here. Uh, we'll put some spinning coins in and we'll put another pipe to take us back up to um, the normal world. Probably extend a little bit here and in the future we'll be dealing more with audio, um, we'll be doing some GUI, scoring and tons of different things. There's not massive amounts still left to learn in this tutorial but there's definitely a good way to go before we can finish it. Eventually we'll get onto like a start screen, a death screen, um, restarting the level and tons and tons of different things. So until next time, um, you play around with your fade screen, get it just how you like it. Um, if you don't like the sound that you can get on a website, choose your own sound. As I say, for legal reasons, I cannot give you the official Nintendo sound for the pipe entry, as it is copyright. But for personal reasons, you can do if you want to. So until next time, thank you very much for watching.